This week, we've seen major updates to a new Linux mod manager, and it's really exciting. We'll discuss. Plus, Steam Replay reveals just how much we played over the last year. And what does SteamOS's Update of the Year beta have in store for us? All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux Gaming News time. Let's get into it. Now, if you didn't know, System76 is one of the few PC manufacturers out there who build and ship exclusively Linux-powered machines. They're the folks behind Pop! OS, and I'm a huge fan of System76. I love the folks that work there. Well, this week they've unveiled their freshly upgraded Pangolin laptop, and it's a doozy. This machine has a Ryzen 7 8945HS CPU with eight cores and 16 threads. It has AMD Radeon 780M graphics, it has up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5, 5600 megahertz RAM, and up to 16 terabytes of NVMe storage, a 16 inch, 16 by 10, 2K display, up to 120 hertz, and up to six hours of battery life. It also has a privacy kill switch for the camera and USB-C charging. Now, this base model starts at $1299, and it's equipped with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte SSD. Uh, I think this is a pretty great deal for what you get. It's got an all aluminum chassis and uh, you know, System76, they're just great and they deserve all the love that they can get. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the work they're doing and this laptop is super neat in my opinion. All right, a new Linux kernel patch caught my attention on Wednesday and this is from Derek Clark, who's a Linux kernel developer. It aims to upgrade the drivers for Lenovo's laptop hardware to better support WMI devices. But the question is, what is WMI? Well, WMI is a proprietary Windows driver extension that allows devices on your machine to communicate with operating systems, primarily Windows. It can provide notifications, it can facilitate communication with firmware of the device, it can allow getting and setting BIOS values, among other things. And from the Linux kernel mailing list, Derek says, quote, Add support for the Lenovo Legion series of laptop hardware to use WMI interfaces that control various power settings. There are multiple WMI interfaces that work in concert to provide uh, getting and setting values as well as validation of input. Currently, only the Game Zone, Other Method, and Lenovo Capability Data 1 interfaces are implemented, but I attempted to structure this driver so that adding the custom mode, lighting, and other capability data interfaces would be trivial to add if desired in a later patch. Now, this patch was also tested against the Legion Go, and it's meant as a replacement for a now outdated patch that did something similar. And speaking of the Legion Go, did you see my video earlier this week? In it, we talked about the leak of the Legion Go S, a price reduced version that includes some interesting function buttons, including a Steam and a quick access menu button. Now, these buttons and the fact that the white variant of the Go S lacks the same branding on the corresponding buttons has led many to conclude the black model is a SteamOS powered device while the white model is coming with Windows installed. Now, if this is true, this would be the very first third-party SteamOS 3 device on the market, and well, I don't think it would be a stretch to say that that would be pretty cool. I, I don't want to go over all the details here because I made a video about that earlier this week, so you can check it out up here. But that won't stop me from asking, what do you think about this? Are you excited for uh, a SteamOS 3 powered device that isn't made by Valve? How close do you think we are to a uh, public SteamOS release? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, you can like that smash button too. It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. And did you know that I release a new video every Monday and Friday morning? Get subscribed so you don't miss those videos too. Now, I want to take a second and thank Sheldon Halcom for his continued support. Uh, he's a Singularity member over on Patreon, and uh, I recently pledged on this channel that I would be 100% sponsor free, and it's because of folks like Sheldon that I'm able to do that. So if you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support the show, you can make a monthly contribution using the links below. All right, let's get back to the news. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm really excited about the new cross-platform Nexus mod app. The question is, why am I excited for it? Well, it's because mod management outside of Steam Workshop sucks for the Steam Deck. Like, actually, it's bad. Now, there's a lot of extra nuance and weirdness when it comes to installing mods on Linux games because they could be installed through Proton or they might be the native Linux version. Simply put, it's a lot of extra stuff that new Linux users won't know but would need to understand in order to make mod management uh, as simple as it is on Windows. 
Plus the fact that managing mods using a tiny screen, a trackpad, and a virtual keyboard is just not ideal. Now this is where the Nexus Mods app comes in, and it aims to resolve all of these issues. This new update, version 0.7.1, brings with it some new and exciting changes, and importantly, it no longer requires deleting all of your installed mods in order to upgrade to the latest version of the app. Now this should make it much safer for regular folks to start trying this out and playing with it on their decks or on their PC for that matter. Now they've done a bunch of interesting stuff here. They've improved the mod loading order screen for Baldur's Gate 3. They've improved the collections experience in the app as well, though it should be noted that uh, collections are still considered a work in progress. They've also improved game detection so that they can find supported titles found in Proton Tricks running under flat packs. They've also improved their optional analytics experience. They've added a placeholder for the games view when no game has been detected. And they've fixed an issue where the first row of the library or installed mods section would sometimes be misaligned with the table headers. There are also several known issues, including the native Linux version of Stardew Valley not being detected when installed through Heroic, among other things. But all of this is to say that this app is starting to take shape and I'm really happy with where it's headed. Let me know your thoughts about the Nexus Mod app in the comments below. All right, now it's time for the deals of the week, where we review some of the best bundles and sales to help you grow your library. This week, I want to talk about Prime Gaming because they've updated their roster, as they do every week, uh, with free games for our Amazon Prime subscribers. Now, if you don't have Amazon Prime, there is a link in the description. Uh, you can pick it up for uh, yourself and help the show out as well. And you can go to gaming.amazon.com and find all these awesome games that are available uh, for free if you have Prime. Now, I wouldn't be promoting this unless there was something cool about it. Uh, and I think you might be able to tell just by looking at this that there is something a little bit interesting here. See, sometimes these games are free uh, for your Amazon Prime gaming account, but often they also have games for Epic uh, that you can redeem, as well as GOG keys. This is the most exciting thing here because when you redeem these, they're DRM free and you add them to your uh, GOG account and they're yours to keep. Now this week I'm mentioning Prime Gaming because they've added one of my favorite games of all time. And if I scroll down here, you might be able to tell this bad boy right here, Spelunky. Spelunky is one of my favorite games ever created. Uh, in fact, we'll get to it in a minute uh, when we talk about Steam Replay. I don't think it would be a an exaggeration to say it's probably my favorite game ever made. And you can get Spelunky right now on GOG, DRM free, uh, with a Prime Gaming subscription. This week alone, I claimed Overcooked 2, I've claimed Dredge, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, The Outer Wilds, Spelunky, Elite Dangerous. I also got Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, Baldur's Gate 2, Neverwinter Nights, Quake 2, and Tomb Raider Underworld. And in the past, I've got a lot of other excellent games like Super Meat Boy, uh, Bioshock Remastered, and many, many more. Now, many of these titles, as you can tell on screen, are GOG keys. They are DRM free titles that I get to keep forever. And I am very much in favor of that. Just the fact that I own Spelunky now, DRM free on GOG, I think that's pretty awesome. Now, speaking of Steam Replay, Steam Replay is here. Uh, this is very exciting stuff. Valve has done this for the last few years. And if you don't know what this is, this is basically Spotify wrapped, except it's for your Steam habits over the last 12 months. Uh, this is fascinating. And I wanted to go over some of the interesting stuff here uh, because, you know, they're comparing this year to last and I played 34 fewer games than I did last year. Uh, this has been a, a pretty slow year for me, honestly, in terms of gaming because I've had a lot of other work to do. Uh, aside from this channel, uh, I released a video game this year called Doodlings Arcade Sports Ball, which you can actually get on Steam. I also do web design and video production work outside of this channel, and uh, I've had a lot of that going on this year as well. So I've had a lot less time <laughs> to do to play video games, honestly. So this year I played about 30% fewer games than I did last year. I earned half as many achievements as I did the year before. And I actually played more with a mouse and keyboard than I did with a controller, which I find interesting because controllers are like my bread and butter. I much prefer controllers over a uh, mouse and keyboard. And you can tell that uh, I was working on my game this year before I got it released. And even after release, I pushed an update and it accounted for 61% of all of my playtime on Steam this year. But I did play some new games too this year, including Animal Well, which was my second most played game and Half-Life 2, which I started to play through and didn't get back to 
uh, after the anniversary update. And I said it was a light year for me, but if we scroll down, we can actually compare my activity versus the uh, average on Steam. And you can see that I actually unlocked uh, more than double the average uh, achievements on Steam. I also uh, played an order of magnitude more new games than the average Steam account. And my longest uh, day streak was 16, which is more than double the average Steam user. Uh, we can also look at the uh, new, recent, and classic breakdown here. 71% of my gameplay was for new releases, although I'm going to guess that very much of this number was because of my game, Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball. But you can also see that 13% was for classic games. Way, way down for me because most of the games that I like to play are rather old, like 10 years old or older. Uh, and then 16% is from recent favorites, uh, one to seven years. So fascinating stuff. I really love these breakdowns. This, this is super cool. You are what you play. This spider graph shows what kinds of games you spent the most time playing in 2024. I played a lot of sports, <laughs> a lot of sports. And then, uh, chess, which I'm working on a new game called uh, chess mess. And so I'm guessing a bunch of that is is here in this column. Uh, and you can uh, actually wishlist that on Steam right now as well. If we scroll down, we can see my favorite game of all time was accounted for 2% of my playtime, and it was Spelunky 2. Then Command & Conquer, Tiberian Sun, and Firestorm. And if we scroll down one more time, we can actually see that I played 51 games and, on my Steam Deck, and that accounted for 36% of all playtime uh, this year. And that's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually, you know, I run a Steam Deck channel and this number was a lot higher last year, but it was because I was working on doodlings. I think that it, this got skewed quite a bit and you know, you can scroll down and there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff here. Now, you know what? I actually really like this kind of stuff because they're collecting this data, uh, when you're on steam, that's just the nature of the world that we live in right now, but it is really cool to see it broken down and visualized in a way that is interesting. Uh, and puts your gameplay and, and your habits into perspective. I mean, they've already got this data if you're playing on Steam. So why not do something cool like this? Now, you can actually make this available for your friends to see or available to the public to see. Uh, I'm leaving mine private because I don't need people poking around in my data. But that's pretty cool that they give you those options. This has been a very busy year for me, like I said. I mean, I had a lot of uh, other projects that I was working on from web design for clients to other media production. Now, I'm going to make a point of playing more games in 2025, I think, but I would love to know what you think. Did your Steam replay throw any curveballs your way? Let me know in the comments. Now, finally, Valve released what looks to be uh, the final SteamOS beta of the year, titled Update of the Year. And this is version 3.6.21, and it comes with some welcome changes. Let's take a look. First of all, they fixed a rendering issue with characters' eyes in Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. They uh, added support for the 8-bit Doe Ultimate 2C wireless controller. They fixed a Linux kernel uh, vulnerability, MPG123 vulnerability, and libarchive vulnerability as well. But this update was also re-released with some additional fixes, including a fix for high single-core CPU usage for users with large libraries during Steam startup, and they fixed a regression with reading the wireless Hori pad for Steam's grip buttons. Now, Valve is notorious for their tongue-in-cheek titling of some SteamOS releases here and there, and I think that this is kind of one of them. I'd love to know your thoughts. When when do you think Valve's going to be releasing SteamOS 3 to the public uh, as, an, as a release to OEMs or anything like that? Let me know in the comments. With that being said, I think that's going to be everything uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to get your name listed over here, you can become a patron or a YouTube member using the links below. That's going to do it for now. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.